Hi, everyone. Good evening. And thanks for joining me this Manas. I think it's the last talk today, so I won't take a lot of time. And uh, I felt we'll talk about Hasura, what it is for all of us, for developers, what the product is. But we'll spend more time talking about how we became the most, one of, one of the most favorable tool out there for developers and, and GraphQL community. I think it's an inter interesting story that uh, you know maybe you know we can learn from from open source point of view. This is me. Um, I've been recently part of Azra, so I was not there for the initial journey that happened. I'll probably be more instrumental to what happens in the future, but uh, I think it's important to look back and, and learn from it, and, and that's what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> uh, what does Hasra do? Um, Think about as if you are a web developer or an app de developer. You are focused on building your business logic, bu building your application, your UI, your UX. But essentially, you also have to build APIs to serve data. And it sits between your data sources and your final application, abstracting away everything that is required for API development, which is actual API development, but also caching, authentication, uh, all the CRUD APIs, no code. You don't have to write any code around all the different kind of cruds that you have to do. And uh, GraphQL is an important part because writing GraphQL APIs is not easy. Uh, uh, GraphQL as an interface if you, if you, if you read about it. So it, it's really helpful if, you, if your eventual goal is to write GraphQL APIs because no code GraphQL APIs, is, it's like amazing. Um, yeah, um, uh, I, this is the only slide about Hasura, so I can take questions later on. Let's, let's talk about the journey. Uh, before that, this is where uh, this is the ma major open source product that we have here. Uh, adopted a lot. It was launched almost four years back. But more than GitHub stars, I think what makes us more happy and proud is to become an important stack of a developer journey, as as you see as one of the uh, testimony here. Um, how did we start? Uh, yeah, I think I think the core team. Tanmay Radhushi were the co-founders and everybody else. They were, they were building applications for, for a lot of customers and folks, uh, and they realized that it's not easy to build production level applications. A uh, lot of repeatable things uh, they've, they've identified, and they just wanted to make it easier as part of the, the usual journey of building applications. So they, they brought all the modern stack that they had, like Heroku, Firebase, Kubernetes, everything that is required to build application at that point of time stitch them together, integrated with their own Haskell-based platform, and, 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 and made it easier for themselves to write application for their customers, right? So they ended up building a lot of things. It was amazing for them, for, for that particular group. Uh, and, and, and we felt that, you know, we built something good that can help us uh, go to 0 to 100 very fast in terms of web app or, app, or mobile app development. Um, if, if you don't know what Hasura means, uh, it's kind of a cool amalgamation of Haskell plus a pun on Asura, which you can think about as process demons. So we felt it cool. Uh, we still feel it's cool. We built something great. We were very proud of it, but nobody knew about it. right? So how do we go next? Uh, this was a pivotal moment for the entire team. They were part of Reactathon, NSF. We had to build something which was new, different, unique, and, and kind of relevant to them, they thought, OK, GraphQL is something that has been popular since some time now, and it's not easy. What if, as part of the Hasra stack, we build a GraphQL engine that can give developers access to the, the data in GraphQL format? Um, we built it, we showcased it. People loved it. Uh, it was an independent piece, which was open sourced as well, give you instant GraphQL data access, which was very difficult. and. I think we also learned that it was very difficult for them to adopt because the Hasura platform was too huge and wide. And uh, it was probably makes sense for new projects, but for if you think about uh, existing projects, uh, yeah, you have to do a lot of things to, to make it work, right? So we learned from these two things. We, we spent another few months, and, and we launched our Hasura GraphQL engine, fully open sourced. Uh, we kind of made a pivotal choice to remove every other things in the stack, just focus on GraphQL engine on, on data access. Uh, written in Haskell, um, we launched it. People started to see value here. 
And uh, yeah, a lot of great conversations with the GraphQL and, and, and developer community around it. Uh, most important thing, make it very easy to getting started with. Uh, yeah, you want to make it like you have a Docker container, just, just spin it up and, and it should work. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we were having some great conversations, a lot of buzz, but we definitely didn't want just conversation or discussion within developer community. We want adoption. I think it's one of the learnings that we see uh, as part of the early team here is that uh, it's important to make that product work for uh, important workloads that we see around industry or, or in developer workflows. So identify those workflows, uh, you know, uh, tailor it for them, and 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 you will see adoption because. Once it's get embedded in the in, in that mission critical part of the ecosystem, it's very difficult to take it away from there. So I think I think focus on one of those aspects and strategy, you know, get us to the stage that we are here today. Um, yeah, uh, as usual, for startups, right? You build something cool, people started loving it, but uh, you had to take it to the next level. So. Uh, yeah, there was no sales team, CS team, nothing. Engineers working with customers, with community, you know, a lot of things happening uh, on Discord kind of system. I don't think if Discord was there or not, but uh, yeah, I think we discussed with community, we discussed with collaborators, learned about what they want, we just delivered it, and 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 great thing was that it started to make sense for some of the enterprise customers as well. This like within two years of. Uh, launching Hasra and um, some crazy numbers, but uh, all because I think it was open source. It was available for a lot of folks to to tweak it, to work it out, and and uh, I think a lot of love poured in because we were very very strongly attached to open source here. Um, if you see the core, the, the the eventual the core motto was how to make the API development faster than before, right? And and cloud makes like makes logical sense. You don't have to host even Hasra GraphQL engine. Um, and it's in minutes you have APIs available over your existing data sources and you can focus on your business logic, your real applications that you want to build. Um, yeah. And then recently we launched Hasra 2.0 where uh, we, we learned on, on more things that our community wants I think initially we launched just on Postgres. So uh, Postgres is not the only databases that being used across. So a lot of new databases we added. One of the great things that kind of worked and resonated with developers and, and customers was we are able to do remote joins on different data sources and tables, not necessarily part of same database. So, and, and very efficiently, thanks to the way we have built things in Haskell. So uh, yeah, and we just keep adding stuff. Uh, and, and mostly these these use cases and these features are actually coming from the community, not from you know, not from uh, enterprise customers as as I would say. So this was this is still very community driven stuff. Yeah, I mean keeping it short. Uh, this is a six year story jam packed into <laughs> ten minutes, but this is what brings us today. And I think just want to spend some time to understand what makes us successful, which is the most common question for Hasra. Like what why are we successful? Uh, with, with, with so focus on open source. And I think what we believe is relentless focus on, on, on developer experience, you know, uh, building tools, building related tools to GraphQL engine, open sourcing it, making it available to people, um, to make sense here because, you know, we're, we're building for developers, developer adopted in mission critical uh, workloads, and then, you know, their their manager or directors have to eventually buy it. So, uh, but uh, be more mission critical. You know, uh, don't lose focus on where it can make sense in other people's journey. So I think here it makes sense to listen to to what your collaborators, contributors, and community is asking for. Right? I think sometimes it's very easy to get get into this thought process of okay, we have built cool something very cool. We continue to build it. This is something that we have built, but even Eventually, that's somebody else using it, so we have to listen there. And, and community is something very important for us. Um, and, and in Hasura, some of the examples that we do today as part of our community outreach is, for example, we do we have a monthly community call. We we bring uh, yeah we we bring people collaborators who are contributing to Hasura or building things using Hasura or GraphQL to 
present day work. Uh, we celebrate different kind of projects here. And, uh, uh, and we have community champions helping us evangelize our product. So yeah, this is about us. Uh, if you want to know more about what Hasura is, uh, we are here and, and later tomorrow as well, our, our desk is there. We can talk about more on technology and, and stack. Yeah, thanks. Questions? I think you're all tired. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvie.